All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I guess I'm second to last, which is uh, what you guys normally rank me anyway. So it's, uh, it's a good, good start to uh, Pac-12 uh, Media Day. And uh, excited to be here. Uh, super excited to be a part of um, this day today, representing the University of Arizona. And uh, thrilled on where our program's going. <clears throat> Thrilled on where it's gone the last seven months, and uh, really excited about the team that we have here. Let's say we have two um, outstanding leaders that we brought with us, uh, Anthony Pandy and Stanley Berryhill, two uh, fifth-year players that uh, have been a part of a lot of coaching changes, uh, have been a part of a lot of different staffs, and um, both of them had opportunities to go elsewhere uh, at the end of this year, and both of them decided to stay and they become incredible leaders for our program, and I'm uh, super excited about that. It's personal for me, it's personal for my family to be a part of uh, this university and be a part of our program. Uh, my family has uh, embraced Tucson, and my wife and my uh, three girls absolutely love it, and uh, we're excited to make it home for a very long time. Uh, we've worked extremely hard over the course of the last seven months to uh, not just change the culture, but create our own culture. We talk about uh, from the very beginning on uh, an expectation of really taking a mindset of becoming a pro. And when we say becoming a pro, we talk to our players about being purposeful, being resilient, being original in everything they do. We talk to our team about the values that we have in our program and how important it is uh, that we don't need to live in a world of rules as long as we live in a world of values. And our program and our team has completely embraced it. Uh, our guys have done an unbelievable job academically uh, since we've arrived. It's the highest GPA they've ever had. Um, they've done an unbelievable job when it comes to community service. They've done over 700 hours of community service. Uh, they've taken care of their bodies, and they understand the importance of being available this fall. Uh, we have 93% of our team vaccinated. Uh, we have eight players out of the 118 on the roster that currently are not, and uh, we believe it's a competitive advantage to get vaccinated and uh, to live freely, let's say, in terms of their health and their wellness. And uh, we want our players to take care of themselves in every way, shape, or form. Uh, we're excited about uh, some of the things that we've done with our team in regards to We Educate Wednesday. Uh, we started a program with our team where they have been able to learn from and hear from some of the very best uh, in all professions, in all walks of life. We've had uh, the 17th Surgeon General of the United States speak to our team last Wednesday. We've had Sean McVeigh speak to our team. We've had Jim Caldwell speak to our team, and we've had Barry Sheck from the Innocence Project speak to our team. We've had guys like Mike Lombardi uh, and Howie Roseman, NFL General Managers, and then in turn, we've also had professors from our university uh, in everything from indigenous law to African-American studies um, to Title IX. So we recognize the landscape of college football. We recognize the landscape of um, building a program. And we are excited uh, to do it. And uh, we've embraced it. We believe in it. Uh, we believe Tucson is a special place. We have brought in a lot of transfers that have been at other universities um, from around the country that have come to join our program. We've brought a lot of people back to the state of Arizona. We believe it is our job uh, to recruit Arizona better than it's ever been recruited. And I 100% believe that if you're gonna choose a state university, choose the one in your own state, first and foremost. And if we can get guys to come to University of Arizona from the state of Arizona, uh, we are gonna do very, very well. And uh, we also believe in our neighboring states and how important recruiting is there. And we are gonna spend every waking moment uh, doing the best job we possibly can to recruit the very, very best to come to the University of Arizona. Uh, we hired a great staff. We hired Don Brown, who uh, not even arguably statistically is the best defensive coordinator in college football over the last eight years. Uh, and we were able to get him from the University of Michigan. He's led 
uh, had the number one ranked defense at Boston College in 2015, the number one ranked defense at Michigan in 2016, and a top five defense for four out of the last five years. Um, offensively, we hired uh, Brennan Carroll. Uh, for all of you in LA, you must be familiar with the name. Uh, it's Pete Carroll's son. And uh, Brennan was at USC. Brennan was at, with me at the University of Miami. And Brennan uh, was at the Seattle Seahawks the last six or seven years to be our offensive coordinator. And then we hired Jimmy Doherty, who was most recently at UCLA the last four years, to come join us and be our passing game coordinator. Uh, we believe our staff is as good as it gets. We believe in our players. We believe in our program. And I am uh, extremely grateful to our administration for giving me this opportunity to be here today. So I will open it up to any and all questions that uh, you might have. Go ahead and come up to the to microphone and ask away. Hi, Coach. You Hello. know, all I see is joy. Um, I've been covering this team for a while now, and I love the joy that you've brought to the program. So um, seeing Ricky Hunley and Chuck Cecil full of joy as well, um, wanting this more than anything, knowing that you also wanted a job like this and bringing them along has meant a lot to a lot of fans. So what have you learned from those two coaches about the University of Arizona that helped you? Yeah, well, thank you. And, you know, Joy, actually, I want to uh, give some credit there to uh, Steve Kerr, another Arizona Wildcat. And uh, anybody that's done any research and read or um, listened to any podcast that Steve has done, one of the four values of uh, the Golden State Warriors is Joy. And um, I've done a lot of research in my past, and I always felt like if I ever had a chance to build my own program, Joy was going to surround it. Uh, bringing in Ricky Hunley and Chuck Cecil, and Teddy Bruschi gave me an opportunity to bring in uh, three Hall of Famers, and we only have four. So um, the fact that we have three college football Hall of Famers on our staff in different capacity uh, gives me a great uh, chance to be successful. Uh, when it comes to Teddy, Teddy really has done a great job for me from the outside, being advisor for me, uh, being a resource and running our leadership council. Ricky and Chuck, uh, they exude passion and they exude joy. And uh, what what we get from them is every day you have a coach of the safeties and a coach of the defensive line that has done that, been there, been to the NFL, coached in the NFL, played in the NFL, drafted in the NFL, and were some of the best players that's ever played at the University of Arizona. But they love it, and they love it, and we love having them around, and our players benefit from it. Also, the, uh, the uniforms. So uh, there's been a lot of fans asking to bring the uniforms uh, back to what it used to be, and I and I did I get that inkling that the, we're going to get some new uniforms this season? Yeah, I you know I'm gonna think I'm gonna tell you the same thing I tell the recruits. <laughs> Don't worry about the uniforms. We got to play well, and uh, hopefully those uniforms will uh, will look good on them. And I think uh, everybody will be happy with the way they look. But uh, I do believe in tradition, and I do believe in um, basics. And I believe in being able to wear the same helmet for every game. And speaking about traditions, I only have a couple more. Speaking about, just my only chance. Speaking about uh, traditions, um, what game day traditions? Are you going to bring back some that we've had? Or are you going to come up with new ones? Like there's a catwalk. They sing the bear down song if they win in the locker room. Yeah, that's uh, it's like a layup right there. Uh, <laughs> in terms of game day, we are going to try to change as much as we can and embrace um, What's worked, and for us, we're abs absolutely going to do uh, the catwalk. Um, we're excited about that. I've always had dreams of being a college head coach one day and getting off that bus uh, with my wife and walking, uh, leading a team. And we're going to do that. We are going to uh, incorporate um, some new songs. We're going to incorporate a little bit more of a party atmosphere. Uh, I really believe it should be the best four-hour party. Uh, that's what college football is. And if you miss out on that, you're missing out on. Uh, we all missed out on it in 2020. So we need to find a way to get a party atmosphere back. We're going to bring a DJ right in the heart of the Zona Zoo. Uh, and we're going to make it as much fun as humanly possible. And we're going to, uh, in the third quarter, we're going to sing some songs and uh, hopefully win some ball games. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, I was talking to Anthony Pandy earlier, and he said that you were kind of like Thanos when you came here, you snapped your finger and everything changes. First of all, do you know who Thanos is? Do you get that reference? I Googled it when I heard <laughs> that. Yes, I know who Thanos okay, is. Okay, all right, I'm just, I'm just checking. So how did, 
how did you go about changing the vibe, the atmosphere, the mindset that was that existed within the program when you got there? Well, I mean, I was the authentic me. Uh, I didn't know what existed, truthfully. And I didn't really know. That was Thanos' theme song right there. <laughs> um, I didn't know exactly, you know, what it was like. I didn't come from, a, the, you know, the program. I didn't get elevated up. So for me, it was to come in and be me, hire the guys that I believed in, and make it our program. And where I am uh, most grateful is we had an athletic director and a president that allowed me to do that. And that's how we were able to make the significant changes we made in such a short period of time. You've been very active on social media since day one. Why did you feel like it was important to put yourself out there like that and, and promote the program via that channel? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's 2021. And to me, that's the best way to communicate um, with not just our own students, but potential students, prospective student athletes, our fan base, our alumni. And um, really, uh, anybody and everybody that wanted to listen, um, I felt like, very simply put, we have an incredible situation. We have an unbelievable university. We have a university that is very prideful, that wants to win, that hasn't won recently. But um, I believe that we need everybody on board. And I've heard the old saying, you know, if you win, they will come. And I always tell these guys, if you come, we'll win. So uh, let's find a way to get uh, everybody in here, and we feel that social media is a great opportunity to do that. When you say these guys, you mean recruits? I mean or everybody. Everybody. Fans, alumni, media. You know, you guys can all come too. Cheer if you want. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's no, not allowed. Just, I know. But uh, no, the fans, the prospective student athletes, the families, and the, uh, the alum. What is your assessment of how recruiting has gone so far? Well, we can't really speak about the current class. Um, but what I can say is that we brought in, uh, I believe it's up to 14 transfers um, that have come uh, from other Division I programs, a lot of them from Power Five programs, that I believe that's recruiting. When they put themselves in the portal and we had to compete to get them, that's a huge part of it. Uh, we signed two kids in high school. Uh, when we arrived, we signed Jason Taylor's son, Isaiah, who's an NFL Hall of Famer. I always believe in pedigree. And uh, from St. Thomas Aquinas, I think he's fantastic, and Isaiah Simpson. Um, and then we also, uh, prior to our arrival, we had 14 other guys that signed. And they have all done an unbelievable job. All 30 of our new players have 100% embraced everything we've asked of them. Is everyone, is everyone on board? Did, did everyone make it academically, so on and so forth? Or is anyone from the class not? Yeah, it, uh, very proudly to say uh, everyone will be here. Uh, we will have 118 players walk in on August 5th. And uh, all 118 will, will be participating in camp. Do you know how many of the 118 are on scholarship? Uh, you know, I, I believe um, currently we're at 81, or I think, or 79. And then we'll uh, hopefully be able to award some scholarships to some guys, um, just like we'll award the number one to the right guy. What, are you, what do you mean the number one? Um, the jersey number one is hanging uh, in the rafters right now in the indoor facility. We had nine guys that requested it. Uh, so they are getting, uh, it's a meritocracy and they are going to compete to be able to get that number one Jersey. So whoever does the best academically, socially with community service on the practice field in the weight room, will be able to wear that Jersey, um, for the season. Do you make a distinction between who the scholarship players are and who the walk-on players are? No, as a matter yeah. of fact, I'm not sure I even can name them all, but, uh, Whoever's the best is really, that's my distinction, if you're good or you're not. And uh, we're trying to get as many good ones as we can. And whether that be a walk-on or not, we, I do know that we had a couple people that we've uh, been very fortunate to bring in as a preferred walk-on that have been phenomenal players and uh, ex extremely excited about some of those guys. But we have some really good young freshmen, and uh, they better be ready to compete. Do you think the quality of the preferred walk-ons is another indication of kind of like what you're like you're referencing before with the portal that that's an example of recruiting or successful recruiting yeah. or that they want to be here yeah absolutely um I, I believe the preferred walk-on program and the idea of it is is really just another way to build your roster up and i think it's super cool that we have that opportunity and um you know we get some guys to choose to pay when they could get get it for free somewhere else uh we really appreciate that, and we recognize that, and we give them those opportunities.
Coach Lynn Harrington, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right. You have a boatload of experience in the NFL as an offensive assistant. Um, particularly, you worked under one of the best coaches in the NFL, Bill Belichick. Can you go over anything that like you learned from him and how you want to implement it in the college game? Yeah, uh, I've been uh, yeah extremely fortunate uh, in the NFL and in college to have worked for some of the best coaches, um, certainly in the NFL. Most recently, Coach Belichick, Coach McVay, Coach Carroll. Um, and all three of them have not only uh, influenced me, but helped me and uh, will help our football team. Uh, Coach Carroll and Coach McVay have already talked to our guys. And, uh, but with Coach Belichick, I talk with him extremely often. Um, and I will say that the number one thing that I brought uh, to our program is mental and physical toughness. And the, the idea of doing what's best for the team, if it's not what's best for you, is being mentally tough. And uh, our team knows that. We talk about that, and we try to give our team the opportunity to uh, find a, you know, to be a smart, physical, and tough football team. And I certainly uh, credit Coach Belichick for that message. I want to follow up on that. Um, Arizona under Kevin Sumlin, uh, the program's coming off, you know, three straight losing seasons. How do you establish a winning culture, you know, with a program that's kind of been down over the years? Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, they have been down the last, you know, couple of years. But if you look back at last season, I mean, they're a minute and 27 seconds away from beating USC. Uh, they, have a, they have a lead. You know, they're up 30 to 27. First game of the year, who knows what would have happened differently. They're up 21 points a year before against Arizona State. Um, who knows what would have happened differently if they wound up winning that game and not losing it, you know. Um, I, I try not to spend too much time uh, dwelling on that. Uh, I've been around a lot of winning programs. I've been very fortunate to say that. Um, I was in the Pac-12 in 2017. I uh, had a chance to be the interim head coach at UCLA for two games, uh, take a team to a bowl game. And then um, when I didn't get the job, I went to the Rams. We went to the Super Bowl. And uh, you see what that's like, and you see what it feels like to be around winners and winning. And uh, it was a pretty phenomenal experience. And then uh, – Went back and had another good year and then went to New England to be around, uh, you know, arguably the best coach has ever done it. So uh, we talk about the winning culture and we don't talk about what happened in the past. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I can I ask you about a few guys who had surgeries and stuff in the offseason and as far as their readiness? Sure. You know, Jamari Joyner was one. I guess he had another thing done with his foot. Do you believe that he's going to be ready at the start of camp? Uh, I don't think he'll be ready for the start of camp. And what is the timetable for him at this that point? That I don't know. You don't know. Jaden Mitchell. He's moving well. He'll he be is, ready. Okay. Jaden Mitchell. Move. Yep. He'll be ready? Yep. Okay. And Christian Young was another one. Ready. He'll be ready? Okay. Well, that takes care of that. Thank you. Um, wh what's the reception been, generally speaking, when you're talking to recruits, parents, et cetera, you know, offering them this, the opportunity to come and play for Arizona? It's been fantastic. Um, we – I mean, we, we work hard at it. You know, it matters to us. It matters to my wife. It matters to our other coaches' wives. Uh, wives are a huge part of it, connecting with the moms and the dads. And um, we were very, very actively involved. Um, I believe that, you know, I feel like I'm on more text chains with moms than I am with um, the kids sometimes. But, you know, the truth be told, it's a situation where we're recruiting very hard and we're trying very hard to turn this thing around. And we have an unbelievable amount of enthusiasm toward our program and energy towards our program. And I believe if we do things the right way, um, things will work out really well for the Arizona Wildcats. Have any of the coaches that you've brought on surprised you at all with their recruiting prowess? We have some really, really good recruiters. Uh, Jordan Pow Pow, uh, very well known in the Pac-12, is a fantastic recruiter. Um, Jimmy has always been a great recruiter. Um, I, you know, we have a lot of great recruiters on our staff. I mean, uh, obviously those guys stand out. Uh, Kevin Cummings does a great job in this area. And, but, um, you know, we have, a, we have a great staff. We have a great bunch of coaches. They're all great recruiters, really. That's part of it. If you're not a great recruiter, you know, you, you can't do 50% of your job. And if you can't do 50% of your job, you can't really do your job. So uh, those guys are all recruiting as hard as possible to be great at it. One of your top aides, Matt Doherty, said in spring that you know Arizona needs to outwork everybody else, out hustle whatever the national perception is. Do you agree with that stance? 
uh, I believe that we need to work as hard as we possibly can. I was once on a team that was told that we're going to do it better than everybody else. And I said, how do you know how good everyone else is doing it? So uh, we're not going to take that approach. We're just going to say we are going to uh, do it as good as we can do it. And we're going to work as hard as we possibly can. And if we wake up early, we wake up early and go to bed late, go to bed late. And uh, we got to turn this thing around. And uh, our goal is to win and win as much as we possibly can and win as many games as we possibly can for as long as we can. Uh, Coach, in the spring, you know, you were uh, pretty invested in the women's basketball team run and that sort of thing. Why is that important, uh, you know, as part of the Arizona Athletic Program? Yeah, I mean, it's part of the Arizona Athletic Program. And uh, I believe that I didn't just sign on to be the head football coach. I believe that I signed on to, to be a great ambassador to the University of Arizona and to the University of Arizona Athletics. Uh, if there's an opportunity, you know, to go support another coach, first of all, I mean, Adia Barnes is, uh, she's an amazing coach. She's an amazing person. And right now she's, um, she's number one uh, in our building in terms of what she's accomplished. But the chance to really support her, support our baseball team, our softball team, if we weren't having an official visit, I would have been out in Omaha um, without a doubt. And, um, you know, for, for me, it's, this is what we do. This is, if you want to just coach football, just go in the NFL, stay in the NFL. Um, if you want to embrace a college community and you want to embrace pageantry and you want to embrace social media and you want to embrace the idea of bringing 70,000 people or 60,000 people or many people we can put in there, then go coach college. And um, that's what I believe in. And uh, I hope to be sitting next to Coach Lloyd on the bench uh, for basketball games as well. I was actually going to ask about uh, Tommy with him being a first year guy and, and you and that kind of thing. I mean, have you been able to interact at all? Yeah, I'm much more of a veteran than he is. It's been four weeks longer that I had the job than he did. Uh, now, we, uh, we, we've gone out for dinner numerous times. We spend a ton of time together. Uh, we share a lot of, um, you know, a lot of messages. We share a lot of acquaintances, a lot of people that we both know. Um, he was at my house the other day. I had him get uh, PJ Carlissimo on the phone. I was telling him a story in 1989. I was 13 years old in New Jersey, and P.J. was the head coach of Seton Hall Prep, and they were in the national championship game. And I said, he was my favorite coach. He goes, let's call him right now. So um, it was pretty awesome talking to Coach Carlissimo. It was pretty awesome to have Tommy Lloyd at the building, and uh, we're going to do everything together as much as we can. Thank you. Hey, Coach, what was uh, go, went through the decision to open up practices again, and do you think that's a competitive advantage for you? Um, to open up practices – I don't uh, know why you would ever close them, personally. Um, I'll close them during the season, you know, in terms of when it's true game planning week. And, you know, we'll do whatever we need to do there to keep it open for as long as we can. But um, for the media to be able to, you know, meet with us for a half hour or whatever it might be. But when it comes to training camp or spring football, like, isn't football great to go watch? And for me, to be able to have people come watch and be a part of it, is awesome. I mean, everybody wants to perform in front of others. So it's an opportunity for our players to perform in front of other people, which I think is as cool as it gets. Um, I'd love for our media to see what we're doing. You know, it's a lot better than them guessing. Um, it's an opportunity for them to see how we interact, how we coach, what we do. So, uh, no, I feel it's a – I just feel like it's the right thing to do, and that's why we do it. Okay. Thank About you. About three more minutes here, guys. I know that you can't work with the players, like with football, is doing specific football stuff, but have you been able to form any initial impressions of Jordan McLeod at this point? Yeah, you know, um, the hardest position to evaluate without a football would be the quarterback position because you can't ever see him throw. But, um, you know, we have had that two hours a week that we have that opportunity to meet with him. We've had two hours a week um, that we've been able to, um, you know, during that time also be able to do some drill work. We've been able to do some uh, team runs and evaluate and watch how he is there. Um, I love just to see how he interacts with his teammates. Um, but, no, uh, Jordan's doing good. Uh, we got a nice, uh, you know, a three-headed monster, Jordan, Gunner, and um, Will. So we'd like to see one of them step up and be the, be the guy. But right now we'll go 33-33-33 uh, uh, for a 99-play practice. Does Jordan come in at a disadvantage at all because he wasn't able to 
participate in spring and learn the playbook as quickly as the other guys? Yeah, I, I would hope so because those other guys, if they didn't get anything out of the coaching in the spring, we got major problems, you know? So I'd hope he's at a major disadvantage, but unfortunately I feel like he's just at a disadvantage. So I'll talk to Coach Doherty about that uh, later. But no, I think that uh, he's doing a great job of trying to catch up. He's doing a great job of trying to learn this thing quick from what I understand. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard because those guys took almost every single rep. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. The year you had at Florida as a GA and working under Coach Spurrier, you, there's just, I sort of seeing you here today, it, it, you know, it reminds me of the videos of Coach Spurrier when he'd be meeting with the media. Just how, what kind of imprint did that year have on just your approach to football? Yeah, well, I was at University of Florida for seven years, uh, undergrad, student assistant, grad assistant. Uh, I went to Florida because of Coach Spurrier. Um, I believe he is the iconic coach. Um, I, th I put him um, up on the Mount Rushmore, and I have uh, probably watched uh, everything I could that he's ever done. Uh, I believe uh, I hired his son on our staff. Um, and I, I hope to one day be um, even in the same conversation uh, in terms of the way he managed his football team, the way he called offensive plays, and the way he won games. And uh, we're trying to build our program and build our coach in a very similar way. What's your favorite Spurrier one-liner or quip? Oh, man, there's so many good ones, right? Like, I mean, you can't spell citrus without UT. is always a classic, but... Uh, there's a lot of great ones out there, and um, I just I learned a ton of, ton of football from Coach Burrier, and uh, I'll never forget that. You, you had said regarding the quarterback derby uh, in spring that it was kind of like whoever moves the ball the best or is most productive. Is there anything else that you're looking for from those guys besides that kind of one metric when you're going to make that determination of who the starter is? No. Whoever moves the ball the best um, in every period we have, uh, who, who moves the football, who gets us down in the red zone, who scores touchdowns. Um, we'll have a lot of competitive practices. I believe that we're going to have a very good defense this year. So let's see what we can do and uh, see if we can move the ball. And whoever does that will be the starting quarterback. Sure, and one last thing, being picked last in the Pac-12 South, what's your reaction to that? Um, I figured as much. So we'll just have to go out there and play really well and see what happens. But, um, you know, that, that's just on past performances. That's not on – no one's seen our team other than you, Michael. Did you pick us last? Don't answer that question. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect with that. Thank you very much, Coach. Okay, thank you all. Have a great fall.